head and neck tumor board is in many ways the core of what we have to offer in head and neck oncology. It represents the melding of the minds, if you will, between surgeons, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, nutritionists, dentists, all of whom participate uh, in the head and neck tumor board. And uh, that is the mechanism uh, in which we come to understand the problem that the patient has, come up with an overall treatment plan, and uh, ultimately offer, you know, offer the, the best solution for each patient's individual problem. Techniques of radiation oncology have been improving, and then really the name of the game is to deliver the radiation therapy to those areas that need it and try to avoid or spare uh, normal adjacent areas that don't need the radiation because that's really where the, f the f functional problems come in. And this new uh, tomography is basically another way to do, to do that same thing, to try and deliver the highest dose of radiation specifically to the tumor area and spare adjacent normal areas. But there are certain tumors, particularly vascular tumors in the head and neck, um, where preoperative embolization um, is absolutely critical. Also, if on, in some unfortunate patients where they've had surgery or radiation and chemotherapy and uh, something starts to bleed, uh, sometimes in a life-threatening manner, uh, it can sometimes be difficult or impossible to, to control that through traditional surgery. Um, and interventional radiology radiology affords us a way to control some bleeding uh, that we used to experience in the past in, in a much friendlier, uh, friendlier way. It also allows us to take some tumors out that are highly vascular and in, which in the past would have led to unacceptable amounts of bleeding during the operation. We can preoperatively embolize those tumors, decrease the blood supply to a point where we can then go in and safely operate on them. We now can use intraoperative computer assistance so that we actually can um, register uh, data on the patient's preoperative imaging studies into a computer uh, and then essentially intraoperatively touch on different areas and see on, uh, an, on, a, on an imaging study exactly where we are in relationship to vital structures. That's been invaluable for, for particularly the skull-based surgeries that we do. My experience over the years has been that the best way to ensure that people continue to seek out your help is to be available to them in the first place. And that means answering the phone if they call you, uh, being able to see their patients within a uh, rapid period of time. The rule in head and neck is that any, any physician referral will be seen within one week. Um, so we set aside special uh, clinic spots, they're the first spots of the day, that are kept open with no return patients simply to see new patients. So we try to make ourselves available. Keeping people involved in the day-to-day -day treatment um, of their patients so that they know, for instance, you know, when's the radiation going to end or when is this you know, surgery going to be? Um, uh, how are they doing? How do you think, how do you perceive that they're doing on their follow-up exams? Um, and I think those are the things that develop these long-term relationships. When I practice medicine, let's just forget about all the rest, I want to take care of a group of people that it is absolutely clear to me need my help. I don't want to be selling what I do to somebody. Oh, you know, this is the, the latest, greatest thing and you need one of these. Uh, I prefer to be in a situation, especially with serious and life-threatening problems, when people come to me and say, I have a problem, can you help me? Most of them are very gregarious, very social. Um, it, it's a wonderful group of people to take care of.